I've been involved with on this cost action, uh, mainly, let's say, thinking about uh, how to contribute also in terms of <clears throat> um, recommendations about innovation and also based on my experience um, need of uh, operators and concessionaires on this. Uh, I have <coughs> also based on my experience in monitoring. So it has been a pleasure to work along these four years. And I will show you mainly what has been done and hopefully with uh, a good impact uh, along all the working groups and uh, all the activities. So I will, this is a very <laughs> straightforward presentation. So I represent mainly what was the, the initial mission of the Innovation Committee at this cost action. Uh, and then focusing on three main pillars, innovation, entrepreneurship, dissemination. That's the basics. And finally, <laughs> I will conclude what I, I think also from the innovation point of view makes sense. What are the main remarks for behind of the T1402 time, uh, time frame? So what is or what has been the mission of the Innovation Committee? So. Uh, in the first workshop, workshop in Copenhagen in 2015, uh, we came up with a, with a structured approach where uh, the Innovation Committee will advise the steering committee in conjunction with the advisory board in regarding to dissemination of innovations. And we focus on three main activities, uh, uh, branches, let's say, innovation, entrepreneurship, and dissemination. Uh, and we could link all these, uh, these three by a set of managerial actions uh, in order to turn this as an efficient outcome along these four years. So this was presented in 2015 in Copenhagen. And in that same time, <coughs> I also presented some ideas about it, how we should tackle. So I will start first with the innovation uh, pillar. So, and by the time, we presented this. So this is a repetition of the slide in 2015. Uh, and I highlight here, I will not talk point by point, but I will say that what is highlighted in green is what I believe that has been successful uh, along these four years. Um, uh, there were a lot of um, brainstorming. Uh, we were able to bring also the perspective of in, uh, uh, infrastructure managers to this, the case studies able to formulate the problems also in industrial uh, perspective. We were able to set up a, a concept of innovation days. Um, this issue about highlighting the perspective of problems that they are currently facing, I will say that is work on progress, and I don't think that we should say that is bad for the fact it's not in a green, but it's something that we should continue working further, and also the subject is not so easy. Uh, something that I put in red, but it's not criticizing, but it's a learning process uh, <laughs> about competitions along these four years in terms of the outcomes that people were able to produce, promoting some kind of prizes along the, the cost action. <clears throat> I'm not saying that we should have done, but uh, it, I leave here the, the comment. And from <coughs> this pillar, I will highlight from the, all these uh, list of uh, activities, mainly something that I think it, have <coughs> it has been uh, very well implemented and, and I think uh, we are in the right direction in that perspective, is that uh, we had uh, short scientific missions that were not closed uh, by itself between universities. So we were able also to push some <coughs> uh, uh, scientific missions to the industry side. And I present here a brief uh, graph. This is an indication. We had 18% uh, of the short scientific missions that involved an industrial partner. But if we enlarge this to the research institutes, uh, this would be bigger. So. But we still see that there is highly dominance between universities. So a lot of short scientific missions, almost 50%, was between one university and another university. I'm not saying that is bad, but in terms of uh, pushing and in involving the industrial partners, uh, I'm happy from uh, the Innovation Committee point of view, and we succeeded. 
uh, to push this concept in practice. Um, also, there is a call, it's still open, so you all, I think, receive a, an announcement on 7 September last year and some reminders somewhere in October last year and in February, where <laughs> under the scope of the Industry Innovation Days, is, we call it project workshops. So basically, the idea is that um, if at this stage your case studies or whatever you have and you believe that uh, you have a strong potential of implementing some of the work that's been done here beyond the time frame of the construction, this call is aimed to help you to strengthen and establish this link after the end of the construction. Although this, please, should be used until the end of the construction, okay? But the objective is, is that helps you to go further, uh, expanding your networking further to, to uh, project opportunities, either, for example, if you apply to European funding, or even, for example, if there is a company willing to fund the project, you can take advantage of this <laughs> instrument for you to visit this company. I don't know, I would like also to say that I understand that we, when we talk about uh, <laughs> industry and companies, there is always sensitive information, but you don't need to put any type of sensitive information in this uh, call. You just present what you want to do, and you just present what you feel that you can present here. So, but it's mainly for you, and also from the Innovation Committee point of view, <laughs> we would like to show to the European Commission that we finalized this construction, but we didn't just stick to this network. We are also already pushing this further and we are leaving some seeds to the future. It's mainly that. And uh, also, as an innovation, I, <laughs> I think also, in spite of the fact we can look this as well as dissemination, but from my point of view, I think it is an innovation. This guide for uh, operators that I presented before, uh, I think is highly relevant and uh, we have been discussing with our, some colleagues on this construction that uh, indeed this can be a very um, relevant document in a medium long run and can inspire other <laughs> uh, approaches or other versions in the future. So if you now push to the second pilot, the entrepreneurship, um, again, going back to that slide that I presented in Copenhagen in 2015, uh, a lot of activities have been envisaged to, to explore it. Again, I highlight in green uh, some of them that have been effectively uh, implemented. Uh, highlight again this issue of the social scientific missions hosted in industrial partners. Well, here hosted is not mandatory to be hosted. It can be an industrial partner that goes to a university. As far as it involved with an industrial partner, was already a plus in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> indirectly, with this approach, we are exploring potential venture and new business opportunities, which I think is also important. I also think, uh, and now talking to more to the younger engineers, uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, this is important also in these cost actions, in these networking activities, is that we should promote these high qualified people with good skills uh, to get visibility and even themselves create their own jobs and uh, promote uh, uh, startups, whatever, based on these mechanisms. Uh, we were also able to involve entrepreneurs. <laughs> uh, the example is the Industry Innovation Days in Lisbon, which was uh, a very interesting uh, workshop, quite different from the usual, where the audience mainly were non-experts and from the industry. Uh, and from this, there are some other issues that we put in yellow, but again, this is not a matter of saying that it's not done, but perhaps it's still in progress. Something that <laughs> I highlight proposals for funding uh, or even different uh, possibilities of funding can be capitalized or explored by the calls that is, they are open and I presented in the previous slide. So it's something that it's still, uh, it is possible to, until the end of the cost action improve a little bit the performance. And from all of these, I highlight the Industry Innovation Days in Lisbon 
mainly because <laughs> this was a workshop, the audience were designers, operators, uh, people that were not uh, familiarized with uh, with this uh, discussion, and this is a, a teaser that is available on the cost website. I will not present everything, but it's we have some testimonials that were very interesting to see how the perspectives needs to go further on this. <laughs> um, in relation to this, there is another in the same call of industry innovation. There's a second type, it's similar to the previous one, but this is mainly uh, <laughs> a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, the objective is if you want uh, to use uh, the available resource of this cost action till the end of, the, of, of its time frame. For example, you can also submit a proposal if, for example, you want mainly to visit a company or an industrial partner to show what has been done in this cost action. So as Maria Pina showed here, we have a lot of uh, information available, the brochure, the posters, the case studies. Uh, if, for example, you believe that you see here that on this cost action I see a lot of potential with a partner that I know and I've been working with, but I would like just to show to them what, I've been, what has been done on this cost action. You could apply and just to follow what has been <laughs> presented in the guidelines for presenting a proposal, okay? Um, and finally, the dissemination. So, as Maria Pina presented here, <laughs> from the innovation point of view, it's basically try to enhance the people's perspective, yes? So try to, to get uh, all these perspectives together and have a better vision of, of the same <laughs> object that we are dealing with. Again, we have this proposal in 2015 in Copenhagen. Uh, I will say that in terms of dissemination, <laughs> and I acknowledge Maria Pina, it was uh, excellent, I think. We have a lot of work done and uh, things should be acknowledged in that perspective. Um, I put in yellow something, but Maria has already showed a little bit, but again, this is something that we need a little bit more time, and mainly after the time frame of the cost action, perhaps one year, two years, five years, to assess the level <coughs> of dissemination that all these outputs came out. Uh, <coughs> and I put in red again, not because I'm criticizing, but uh, this perhaps is even more ambitious, and further away is how this uh, cost action contributed to the change of paradigms, yes? For example, what I presented before on the guide of operators, it's ultimately, uh, and as Michael mentioned his comment, push this mentality from a passive approach to a more proactive approach, where these tools are perhaps a very useful tool for this approach, more proactive, yes? <laughs> So do not understand or interpret this red uh, box as something that was, it went wrong. I'm saying that it needs more time to assess properly. And that this <laughs> dissemination power, I will mainly highlight uh, again some of the uh, outcomes that I believe that the Innovation Committee helped and contributed effectively. Uh, first of all, is the special sessions on the two conferences and YAPs last year in Nantes in 2018 and the next one in Gimanej, this year in Gimanej. Uh, <coughs> the title again is, uh, for example, we try to put this for a non-expert audience, so why invest in ACGM or civil engineer infrastructures? We invited the authors to at least one third of the paper write it in a way that these audience, these owners and concessionaires may understand what is the uh, value of each of one of these works. And I present here uh, <laughs> just an indication and based it on numbers that Jochen presented, uh, the case studies that have been submitted to Nantes. So when I say first, second and third stage, it's basically first stage uh, <laughs> is the ones that didn't went further. Uh, the second stage are the ones that were presented and has a fact sheet. And 27, the third stage, are the ones that reach to a level that 
they submitted conference paper. Let's understanding, from my point of view, this 27% shows from all the case studies reach it to this level at this stage on the conference paper. So in terms of maturing the case study step by step, from the fact sheet to the conference paper. And finally, <coughs> another thing that uh, we are working together, I'm uh, the Innovation Committee supporting Jochen Working Group for on that, is that we are preparing <coughs> a call for the, on engineering structures, focusing on the case studies. So again, and I'm trying to also to sell this in this uh, uh, <coughs> methodic approach, is that uh, there are people that start with a small fact sheet, then move forward to a conference paper, and perhaps if you help them, we can push this to the journal paper. But of course, <laughs> this is open to everyone that wants to contribute to the call. We just want to stimulate the ones that already invested their time on these two special sessions and we will be able to circulate a call for this uh, special session. And finally, <laughs> and I will conclude this part, this was an idea that came in Cyprus uh, during the, the, the meeting. From the Innovation Committee point of view, I think, uh, and I'm not at all uh, an expert on the value of information, but from what I learned, and I learned a lot from this for along these four years, what I see today on these presentations from working group one to six, I'm pretty sure that we have the potential to, to produce a book, uh, something like quantification of value of social health information from the basics to field applications, just look into the work that has been done here. And even this could be, have, could have a high potential to contribute, what I presented as a red box, changing paradigms. I think, from my point of view, <coughs> if we are able to succeed in getting a good special issue here with a good set of case studies, I don't say that we need to cover all the type of structures. Whatever we are able to reach to that level of maturity, I'm pretty sure that a book with this title and properly thought would be have a huge impact, even for example in educational proposals, either in universities or operators or practice engineers. I think we discussed this in Cyprus. There were people that reacted positively, others not so positively. That's fine, uh, <laughs> but I see this as a, a long investment plan for those that are willing to look to this as that. <laughs> and finally, as remarks from this uh, also learning process and these four years. I leave some remarks for what I say beyond the TU1402 framework, time frame. <coughs> so this, I started with this in 2015. I put here the main contributions, or at least I, from my point of view, with the bigger impact and I mention all of this on this presentation, which I believe that uh, uh, I'm happy personally to have been uh, able to help and contribute to my colleagues on this network. And uh, of course I'm suspicious because I'm the leader, but from my point of view, TU1402 can be seen as a good example to be disseminated in the future on how to implement innovation. So, from my, but more, better than me, you can judge. Uh, but I think there was a systematic and methodic approach <laughs> to explore uh, how uh, new concepts, new ideas, novel approaches could be implemented on top of the research issues. Uh, I think also that the capitalization of the short scientific missions in research institutes and industrial partners to create new and cutting edge job opportunities. I focus on this because uh, from my point of view, we should be also sensitive that uh, young engineers that they are doing their PhDs and they will get their PhD, <laughs> uh, we need them. 
not only for doing research, but I also challenge them to think about how you want to change the future and how this could be resulting in new type of jobs. Um, and again, and link it with what I presented before, pushing these four years of collaborative work and networking into a reference book in the literature towards educational purpose. So what was discussed here before, even about educational, with Helmut and Dimitris, I think we could, uh, and we have already uh, substantial work done to reach to this level. Uh, <laughs> and although more work is needed, there is a hypothesis in the mid-long run to see the effective impact in the industry sector, okay? As Michael said, and uh, to have a more proactive and rational asset management protocols independently of what type of structures we are talking about. But for sure, to achieve this level, to this potential in uh, practice, we need to learn and to communicate with them uh, mainly from their point of view also in my point of view. And that's it. Thank you very much.